Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. In this video, I want to quickly glance across what this scene is because I uh, featured this scene in one of my videos and it attracted some attention. So I decided to give you a look at closer detail. As you can see, it is a razor ugh, construction in a plastic container from a uh, from a butter if memory serves me right anyhow you can see the main board there which holds all the goodies you can see the 16 by 2 LCD display that stands off on these brass standoffs you can see another board here which is a power supply board which goes and converts 3.7 volts from the lithium ion cell you can see there which is obviously charged by the TP4056 module and this thing converts cell voltage to plus 5 volts for the circuitry and somewhat of a 12 volts for the relay I actually recently went and purchased the relay which as you can see is a 5 volt is a relay with a 5 volt coil but pre I just ordered it just uh, like a week ago and obviously when I built this scene I didn't have it so I was forced to use a 12 volt relay but I did not want to make this scene incredibly complex so I actually went and uh, this charge con <laughs> This uh, boost converter is actually worth its own video and maybe I will do that. Because it creates 12 volts very very simply without any... It's not regulated but it's quite fine for the driving a coil. Anyhow, close the look here, you can see three buttons. One button here is turns turns it on and uh, also serves as a null button with help of which you can null out the device null out the stray capacitance or the inductance of the leads this button selects um, inductance measurement mode this one selects capacitance measurement mode now this scene is called LMC because it is a, a combination of an ELM chance meter which measures large electrolytic capacitors by just charging them and measuring time it takes to charge them and a circuit called LC which is inductance capacitance meter which works on a very mm, not as usual but still quite straightforward principle it has a little built-in oscillator into which you will introduce your part, capacitor or inductor and that will shift the frequency obviously of that tank circuit which you can see an inductor there and a mica capacitor and the microcontroller which is under there it's kinda hard to see but whatever it will measure the difference in the frequency and it will know it knows what the inductance of this part is and it knows the cap capacitance of the cap in its own circuit so it will be able to calculate the value of the capacitor under test or inductant inductor under test again i'm babbling for way too much i'm gonna give you a closer look here without the lead then i'm gonna show you the schematic then i'm gonna, you sh gonna show you how it works You can see, you can see a little buzzer there, which is not a piezo, it's just an electromechanical buzzer, kind of like a small speaker. All right. You can see a 3.3 mega ohm resistor made up of three 10 meg resistors, because I did not have those on hand. Turn block here, which you can see has three leads. Middle one is ground. This one is for the elm chance meter which measures high capacitors high value capacitors but I don't use that because I have a transistor tester and it is quite a bit 
nicer for measuring high value electrolytics and stuff because it tells me ESR and the leakage this tells me only the capacitor value and this contact is obviously for the small capacitors and inductors you can, the chip there on this kind of crude adapter board is an LM311 comparator and uh, why it is on the adapter and why didn't I just include it into the original board because if you will take a look at my old videos you will see a video called uh, beware of LM fake 3 LM LM311s on eBay basically I purchased LM311s in Deep8 package from eBay and they are fakes they were fakes I could not use them so I was forced to buy uh, the one in SO8 package and plug it in there again this video is gonna be just a quick overview you can see the guts there now I'm gonna go show you quickly the schematic very quickly glance across how it works and then I'll show you how, I, how it measures stuff okay the schematic let me put it somewhere here so you get the largest image focus right sorry for the strobing the camera kind of picks up the strobing because it's very bright it has you can see two parts this part which contains a power switch circuit 7805 regulator well that is necessary if you use 9 volt battery I don't but in original circuit it was like this the actual built-in oscillator as you can see around the LM311 comparator which is really straightforward nothing fancy about that decoupling cap some pull-up resistor for the output because it's open collector a little bit of feedback here as you can see capacitor there these two resistors just set up this non-inverting input at half the supply here is that uh, inductor which was there as you can see here it is and the one and a third capacitor is that mica capacitor which I chosen for the stability reasons it is AC coupled I don't know exactly uh, well I do know why because <laughs> otherwise it will be the voltage here on this input will be dragged to the ground via this inductor which is a short for DC as you can see and that's your double pole double throw relay which normally was a 9 volt relay I think so because you can see one end of it well actually no I think it was 5 volt relay but it was driven from 9 volts here through a resistor I forgot where my focus is yeah so that's that and here is the main contraction it has an 80 mega 8 very nice microcontroller reasonably inexpensive again 16 character 2 rows LCD again reasonably inexpensive thing nice stuff it's a ISP header for uh, in circuit programming this device I did not put in this little part of the circuit because um, this one is a quasi RS232 interface to kinda make this scene able to talk with a PC I did not want that functionality so I left it out yeah again so that's a quick overview links to the website where you can find both schematics and many more you can find uh, software there, you can find how to calibrate the scene and stuff I'm gonna leave it there in the description there will be a link to it so here I just showed you I don't know why I showed you actually okay I mean like I don't know why I showed you because I did not explain it all that much but oh well first of all really <laughs> I kinda 
I kind of hate explaining stuff because I am not greatest at uh, explaining stuff. And uh, second of all, I want to keep this video short and it's already 10 minutes. So it will take more than 4 hours to upload for me. Again, this button, hold it down, it will turn it on. What the hell? Okay, the button for some reason crept out. Anyway, a button is just a contact, alright? There we go. It's actually kind of easier. If you switch it on for the first time, it goes into Elm Chance meter, which is on that contact, which I do not use. Again, it measures well into the thousands of microfarads. And with this button, I can select inductance meter. You will hear the relay click. And now we are in inductance, we are showing question marks because when this scene is open it treats it as an infinitely large inductor and this scene is just completely... Ugh. If I'm gonna go and put these two together you will see it shows minus 0 0.337 micro Henry. I can null it by pressing that button, but since it crept out, I need to use tweezers again. You saw it so... You saw it said bridge the device under test and press null, I did, and you can see right now it's zero nano -henries. excellent. Now I can go find some little coil, oh, perfect. You can see that little coil on there. I, I like count how many turns there is. I'm too lazy to say. For do that, that to do that, it's um, 0.6 millimeter wire, five millimeter core. Well, former. I break this open. I now put this in. And it says me that it is a 578 nano Henry. Quite a lot <laughs> for an air core inductor. Uh, I don't know, but I trust it. Now let me take some known inductors. Like this part, as you can see, brown, black, black. So it's 10, 0, 0, 10 micro Henry's connected here. Nine point two eight eight micro Henry's, well within the tolerance. Now for the capacitor, you press Z button. The relay clicks because it powers off, and you can see some value again. As I bring this closer, it will increase. As I take them away, it will decrease. I can of course null it out as well by pressing that top button and holding it. See, remove device under test, press null. I press it and it will put an offset into the software and you can see I have zero peak of errors. But now if I change the position of the leads, I will have some offset, but that's not a big deal, right? And to kind of demonstrate how cool it is, I'm gonna take a small capacitor, like, like this, 2.2 picofarad. You can see the little offset. Again, but have in mind that as I bring it closer, the offset will rise, so this will introduce some uh, error. So I'll try to keep the leads there at, uh, at kind of the same distance apart as they were when I nulled it. Come on. And I see 2.6 picofarads. Pretty damn fine if you ask me. Again, it's 
it's a, a fraction of a picofarad we were talking about fraction of a picofarad off <laughs> if that's not impressive I don't know what it is what it is so that's that 15 minutes already enough is enough you can see and to power it off you go and hold these two L, L, L and C buttons together it powers off and it of course provides an audio feedback every time with every button press nice nice stuff if you don't have an inductance capacitance meter but you know how to program microcontrollers well how to take existing software and program a microcontroller I don't mean write a code for the microcontroller you can build this and you'll be very happy I'm using this for years now it is an excellent circuit to have around thanks for watching see you